What should you do during your exam period? So in this video, I'm going to tell you the step-by-step -step process of what you can do so that you have a peace of mind and you have a structure of how you're going to, what's the word, navigate through your exam period. Because now this is different, right? This is not the same as before the exam where you had a bit more of a longer timetable and a bit more of a relaxed approach in the sense that, okay, things are not coming up soon. But because now you have your dates, exam dates, and probably you've started already, there's more urgency and there's more like, okay, I need to get this done and I need to make sure that I get this done because Tuesday my exam is coming. Up. So what I'm going to do here, I've written five points that I'm going to go through that will give you the most benefit on how you can navigate through those exam periods and take that stress away and give you a bit more peace of mind. The first point is you should create a new timetable. What do I mean by this? You should know by now your exam timetable, what subjects are happening on which days. Everyone should know that, you should know that. And what you want to do based on that is, okay, if I have, for example, Monday physics, Wednesday maths, Thursday history, you want to create a new timetable that fits those exam timetables. Why? You want to be in a position, and I mentioned this in my previous video, you want to be in a position that you know what to do once an exam is finished. You don't want to be kind of thinking about the emotions or if it went good, if it went bad. It takes you off the path. You want to be on the straight path knowing that, okay, when I come back from this exam, I've got to do this because this is what my timetable says. So say for example, you have Monday physics and then Tuesday you have, I don't know, English. So when you finish physics on Monday, you know, okay, I have a timetable that says I need to revise for English because English is my next exam. It sounds easy, right? It sounds simple, but sometimes the most simple things people are not able to do. So that's why I have to say it out. So make sure you have a timetable that you set during those exam periods so you know exactly what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, for how long you're going to do it. The second point is laser focus. What do I mean by this? Let me expand. You need to be in a mindset where you are absolutely focused now on what you're doing. There should be no distractions, okay? No distractions whatsoever. Think of it like this. Like when you see a lion, when a lion is about to go for the kill, it sees a prey, an antelope, I don't know, whatever prey it goes for, right? Buffalo. I mean, Buffalo is quite big, so it probably needs a lot more lines than that. But you get what I'm saying, right? When a lion goes for the kill, is about to go for the kill, can you see the concentration, the focus that the lion has? That is the focus that you want to have. Absolutely no distraction. It's like the lion's body is in a trance. It is waiting to go for the kill. Your mind should be in a state where you are completely in it, zoned in. Any other distractions that come, you can't. it just goes like this, it comes out the other. It doesn't even affect you because you're so zoned in in what you're doing that any other distractions has no impact on you. You want to make sure that you're on that level because right now, listen, exams are going to come thick and fast, left and right, up and down. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. So you want to make sure that you are focused on exactly what you're doing, when you're doing it, and what still needs to be done. That's very important because it's easy to lose focus. And when you lose focus, you have to get that focus back. And that takes a lot of willpower. You're not going to have a lot of willpower when you're going through all these stress and anxiety periods during this period. So you want to make sure that you set yourself a time, you know exactly what you're doing, and you cut everything else. Cut friends out if you have to. Well, actually, I'm going to go through the next point, but you have to make sure that you are focusing yourself because listen, at the end of the day, this is your exam. You're going to be doing this exam. The grades is going to come on you. Your name is written on it. So there's no point of going through a period where it's only going to be what, two, three, maybe a month of just complete focus and then you can do whatever you want. During this period, just put the work in, man. Just put the work in, do as much as you can so that you know when you look back, you're not going to have any regrets. The third point is cutting out distractions from your friends. Listen, man, like friends, I need to make a video on this because I think this is so so important and I don't think a lot of people talk about this because they just don't want to open up and just kind of share the truth and I'm going to share this because I think this is going to resonate a lot with you but you want to make sure that when you're in a period where you need to study and you need to focus on yourself you cut distractions in the sense that you cut your friends like I'm not saying cut your friends but I'm saying okay if they say oh let's go out for this and that you don't need to go out you don't need to go out because you've got a lot of work to do okay and you need to go and tell that to your friend as well listen like what are we going out for we're wasting time you should be working as well that's what you should be doing a good friend should be telling the other person as well that listen you're missing up. I don't want to see you mess up. I don't want to mess up. We need to work. We can hang around. We can do anything like, you know, go cinema, whatever, after the exams are finished. You want to cut those distractions. Social media, TikTok and all that rubbish. To be fair, you don't even need TikTok anyway, even outside the exam period. Listen, it is what it is, but you should cut those things out. You don't need TV. You don't need Netflix. You don't need any of that stuff. Trust me, when you cut these things out, your mind is a lot more at peace. You're able to think a lot more clearly. Your stress levels and everything, it goes down. Do you know why? Because you don't have distractions. When you don't have distractions and you don't listen to what other people say, your mind is in a more peaceful state. It's more, what's the French word? Tranquille. C'est vraiment tranquille. Yeah, that's it. For all those French people that know what I just said, put that down in the comments. What did I just say? C'est vraiment tranquille. So cut the distractions. Make sure that it's kind of like, you know what? It's kind of like you're hibernating, like being a caveman, I guess, if that makes sense. Like you're just kind of in your room, literally just working. Yeah, you're just so zoned in in everything that you're probably going to have books left and right, but you know what you're doing. And then to an hour, what is that? Oh, that's my washing machine. Oh, 
flipping, okay, whatever, never mind. You're kind of like zoned in so that to an outside person, when they come, they're like, what the heck is going on? And it's like, don't worry, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. That's where you want to be, right? So make sure that you cut those distractions. And listen, it's only like a month anyway. Your friends will understand. Don't worry about that. Just focus on what you need to do and just keep at it. The fourth one is, I made this mistake so many times is, once you finish an exam, I don't know if you do this, but you go and ask your friends, what did you get for this answer? What did you get for this answer? Oh my gosh, you got this for the answer. Yes, I got it. Oh, you got this. Oh my gosh, I didn't get it. Okay, let me ask someone else. You go and compare your answers with other people. Don't do that, man. Because the reason why I say don't do that is most of the time, it will not, it's not good. You just hear thick, man, this wash it. Ugh. Most of the time, it's not going to be good news. You're going to get an answer and most other people are going to get different answers and you don't want that. You don't want to hear those things because it's going to mess you up mentally, right? What you want to be doing is once you finish your exams, you finish and you go home if you can go home. And if you can't, just don't talk about the exam. Just talk about something else because you want to make sure that your mind is intact and you're not focusing about what's just done. It's done. It's finished. What's done is done. You can't go back in the exam and change it. Okay, so there's no point of talking about it. You want to make sure you don't do that because it will impact you. Trust me when I say this mentally because you're going to think, oh my gosh, I didn't do well. And that kind of mentality or that negative feeling is going to go forward with your other exams that you're revising for or the other exams you're about to take. And the last point, which is one of the most important points is don't dwell if you have not done well in an exam. And the reason why I say this is because you're going to have many other exams that's going to come. You cannot let one exam that has gone wrong affect every other exam that you're about to do. Listen, there's certain times in life where no matter how much you try, not everything is going to go accordingly. That's just a fact of life. And that is okay. That is nothing wrong with that. Just make sure that you're able to do what you can and if it hasn't gone well it's okay but the problem that we all do is we dwell on the things that did not go well and when we dwell on the things that did not go well we are wasting time and our mental capacity has kind of gone now because we're dwelling on the negative side which means now we can't focus and revise with the other exams that we have tomorrow the day after if it hasn't gone well it's okay don't worry at the same time as well if it's gone well and you're happy about it that's great but don't get too complacent don't get too cocky thinking like yes this exam went well i'm gonna relax a bit no that's delusion do not do that because at the end of the day Listen, you still got exams to do. It's not over yet. It's over until the last exam has been done. Until then, you are not in rest mode. You are still in work mode. Whether the exam went well or bad, it's irrelevant. It's done, it's fine, and it's finished. You can't go back in the exam room and say, oh, can I change the answer, right? So it's finished. That is your mark, whatever you're gonna get. Now focus on the things that you can change, which is the exams that's gonna come up. Hopefully you can take these practical steps and use it in your own exam period. And look, if you fail, it is not the end of the world, okay? Don't think of it like that. I know it's easier said than done because you're feeling the pressure but what you want to do is make sure that you give your 100% effort. That is all you can do. And as long as you give your 100% effort and you do everything that you can, whatever the grade is, you should know at least I've done everything. That's fine. That is not a problem. The problem comes when you haven't done as much as you can and the grades don't come. That is when you should feel like, okay, you know what? I messed up. So don't look at it like that. Put the effort in, put as much as you can, keep consistent and stay laser focused and you'll be okay. Everything starts from zero. When are you going to start? Peace.